Hey y'all, I'm Blaine Phillips. And I'm Jason LeVan. We're married, like just a minute ago, but we've been together for 14 years. We have a teenage daughter. Which means she's basically an adult, right? We're also growing a business on the side together. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Through all of that, we learn how to improve so many aspects of our lives and show up in an amazing way. So we decided to host a podcast to share our journey with you. It's called Let's Do Life Together, because that's just what we want to do with you. So if you could use some tips and tricks on how to make life a little smoother, then you're in the right place. Come on in and let's do life. Hi, friends. You know, I keep telling you that we love hearing from you, whether it's a review, whether it's a message in our Instagram, whatever it is, we love the feedback. We want to hear what you're liking, what you're not, what you want to hear more of. So today I want to shout out A. Brooks, who came in over on my Instagram and said, I've been listening to your podcast and I'm digging it. You have such a presence about you that when you talk about other people, they listen. I appreciate what you and Jason are doing. How good is that? A presence? Huh, how good because a a presence over the microphone. Thanks so much, A. Brooks. And again, we want to hear those reviews. We want to know if you're liking it. We're here to serve you and bring you the content that you want. You just have to tell us, right? Right. Tell us what you're liking, what you're not liking, what you want to hear more of, or any uh, topic ideas. Yeah. So let's get started with today's episode. Episode 19 already. Man, I can't believe we're here. And today, we thought you might just want to sit back and let us tell you a story. It's not necessarily one meant to educate you, or maybe it is. You're going to educate you about us. You're going to learn more about us. So we're continuing our love all the things vibe in February. So why not tell our wedding story? Oh. <laughs> Jason, a, try again. Why not tell of, our wedding story? It's a story of perseverance. Is that it? I feel like that's not the word you want to use when you describe a wedding story. Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. So let's dig in. Sit back, relax, pop in your earbuds. You're not going to want to miss this one because you're going to learn a lot about us that maybe you didn't even know. Well, I think we've talked about this in an episode before. Jason and I were both previously married. Um, and I think our views changed on marriage in that process. We both got married, as I think you should, believing that it was happily ever after. I feel like if you go into a marriage not thinking that, we probably should have a different conversation. But that's not today's episode. We believed it was happily ever after. And then it wasn't. Things broke. On both ends, and I'm speaking for both of us here, but they broke. And it's not one person's fault over the other. It just did. And we both ended up in divorce. Because we didn't know at that time what we know now, I think, about the importance of investing in your marriage and in your partnership. Yeah. So we just kind of went the way of so many other people, and you grow apart or you you let certain setbacks or the valleys rule the whole relationship and you give up. Yeah, I was young. I was immature and I didn't know that work needed to be done to hold on to it. That's the truth. I just didn't know. And I didn't have a lot of role models modeling that for me either. So when things got hard, I tapped out. That's the truth. And you know, maybe it could have been a different road if I know now, but that road led me to here and led Jason and I together. And I would never change that. I don't really like to live by regrets. Everything was a lesson um, if you learn from it. And I definitely did learn from it. So here we are. And we came into this relationship feeling differently about marriage, quite honestly. I mean, I know I can speak for myself. I did. I felt differently. It was supposed to be happily ever after. It wasn't. So it just kind of felt like a broken institution for me in that moment. And we just rolled into a relationship that grew, um, not intentionally, just slowly and turned into something and evolved. And I just let that keep going. I let my heart guide me to where that was supposed to be. And pretty soon, pretty soon, I'm not kidding, we were living together and then we were expecting a baby. We did everything possible in backwards order. We had a baby. Then we got a house and then we got a minivan. I feel like we checked all the boxes, maybe just not in your traditional order. Right. And those things were all in a short period of time, too. Yeah. Oh, it happened fast. We weren't messing around. Once we were in, we were like, all right, well, let's do this. I guess that's what happens. But so we just kind of felt the same way. Like life was good. We live in a very 
traditional type role, I suppose. Our relationship was very traditional. We just weren't married legally. People would ask and we would, we didn't really think about it. Like it didn't matter to us at that point. We were very rooted in who we were. We were confident. We knew we weren't going anywhere. Like it wasn't a matter of commitment. Like we were together. We were doing this thing and we have certainly walked through harder seasons. We will talk about that. We have talked about that openly and then we figured it out and we started to do the work to grow and we came through and we were stronger. But none of that ever really mattered about marriage. Like we were just committed couple regardless of what a paper said. Right. And we put off um for many years when people would ask, we would say, Well, you know, we'll we'll consider it when everybody can get married. Yep. And that worked for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it did work for a while. And now thankfully everyone can legally get married. So then the dime was back on us. Well, what's your next excuse? Not that that was an excuse. It was just a laugh that we brushed it off. And so it just honestly wasn't a priority. And then about two years ago, I think two years or so ago, we were away at a conference as a family, me, Jason and Sienna were all there. And we were sitting in their seats listening to this a mentor of ours explain it's a family and business conference. And she wasn't even she was talking about finances. Like it was not even related to relationship in this section. She was talking about finances. And she just started to talk about something. And there was an example. And I don't know. I mean, I could give you the whole story. But the point is, in that moment, like, Bam, I got convicted in my heart. Like, and as we've talked about before, I am a believer in Christ. And that walk was really starting to begin at that season in my life. I mean, I've always been a believer, but I hadn't really been actively walking, I suppose. And what she said combined with me in my journey, like I was convicted. And I just kind of sat on that. I was like, holy poop. Like, I think I want to get married. Oh my. And I sat on that for a few days. I didn't mention it to Jason. Like I just was like, really? Do I really? Was that really? Really? And then I brought it up. We were in, we were out of town. We were in Florida and we did our conference and then we stayed and we went to Universal afterwards. And one of the days after Universal, I was like, so, uh, hey, I remember. And I brought it up like the point of this in the conference when she said it, I was like, yeah, well that kind of hit me in my gut. And I felt like, I think I want to get married. Want to talk about a face? (laughs) (laughs) That was the face. And I still didn't. No, and he still didn't. He just looked at me and he, I feel like his look said, well, that's great, honey, but I don't. He didn't say those words. It was more like, okay, what am I going to do with this? (laughs) Oh, well, now the truth (laughs) comes out. (laughs) And he didn't. Like, he wasn't convicted. He didn't, he still had the same feelings. And I couldn't be mad about that. Like, we had been on the same page for all, like, for 12 years. And my heart changed in that moment. And like I said, I took some days to really digest that and make sure that it wasn't just emotion caught up in the spin of the conference or whatever. Like, no, I really was changing. And I felt like I wanted to come together in that marriage unit, not in the capacity of anyone else, but just kind of between me, Jason and God. Like that was where my heart was coming from. Well, as we've talked about, Jason is not a believer and his heart didn't change. And he certainly wasn't convicted because he wanted to have a relationship with God. So there we were. And I just, I was very open. We had a very open and honest conversation about why I was feeling that way, where I was feeling. And he just had to process that and take it in. And he didn't have the same feelings. What I wasn't going to do, though, it was just go through with that just to make you happy or just to give that to you. And I was very clear on that. Yeah. I mean, I was very clear. I knew that if I said to Jason, here we are 12 years in, like we have a kid and a house and we still have the minivan then I think like we had all the things we were living a very traditional lifestyle. And this is a man who loves me and is committed to me. And I knew that if I looked at him and I said, I want to get married and I want you to marry me, he would have. 
He would have because I wanted that. But he wouldn't have because he wanted that. And I was very clear in that. I said, listen, my heart has changed. And I came out of left field with this. And I surprised you. And it came out of left field for me, too. Let's not pretend. It's not like I've been plotting or anything. Like, all of a sudden, bam, here I am. So I said, that's the opposite of what I want you to do. If and when we ever marry, I want it to be because you want to. And I just let it sit. So I had to come at it through my own process and actually it's something we talked about in therapy, you know, how to how to reconcile getting there for different reasons. So yours was, you know, more religious associated and mine definitely was not. And then just being okay with the two of us reaching the same spot but for totally different reasons and ways yeah now am i going to pretend that it was always easy no we attended two weddings that year both of jason's best friends from high school who had both vowed to never marry either right so two old guys getting married where we're you know close to them and they those are very different as well different reasons different ways that they got there Yeah, but they got there and we attended and I was like, oh, jeepers, all right, all right, all right, extra tears for the wedding. But again, I wasn't going to force him. And because my heart was there, I honestly, truth, hand to heart, did not believe Jason's heart would ever change on this topic. I didn't. I was just, and I mean, I love him. We, I wasn't going anywhere. We weren't going to break up. I wasn't going to break, break up. That sounds so funny. Like, what is that? Is that even, are we dating? What's happening? Like, we weren't going to not be together anymore because we ha- weren't living married. Um, but it was on my heart. It was there. I hung out. Are you sitting down? Because I'm not even kidding. 15 months. 15 months went by. That is almost a year and a half. And I'm telling you, Sienna, our daughter, actually looked at me one day and said, Mommy, if that's a dream of yours, you're probably going to need to go ahead and let that one go. <laughs> she must get that from me. Yeah. Oh, boy. And I, and I guess I did. rip that Band-Aid off. Yeah, rip the Band-Aid off. And I mean, I pretty much did. I'd be lying if I didn't say it was still lingering in my heart and certain moments came up and I was like, all right, but it was there. We were happy. We were still doing our life. Fast forward 15 months. We are away on a trip in Mexico. Well, so the back up a little bit. Though. Oh, we're backing up. All right. So you had always had this um, fairy tale wedding and fairy tale engagement proposal in your mind. We've covered I'm a hopeless romantic, yes. But so for your first wedding, you did not have those things. I did not. So the pressure was was on at that point. Once I decided, okay, we're going to do this, the pressure is then on to try to fulfill that fairy tale. Was it? Was it pressure? Did you feel pressure? You never said that. Oh, yeah. Huh. All right. Um, Yeah, I am definitely a hopeless romantic. I love all those happy movies. We've talked about how I cry at them. And I don't know. I just have the little girl fairy tales. And it didn't happen that way the first time. Um, Jason did kind of have that scenario. He had the big wedding and all the things and the whatever. But um, I don't know. I don't know about it being fairy tale. But I, I guess I guess he had pressure. So here we are. We're in Mexico. We're away on a trip. And (laughs) <laughs> it is it's our last day this I can't even get ready because we are going serious full on story now like this story has so many layers it's not even funny and you're not like oh man so we have this super we're in where were we at Punta Cana we were in Punta Cana and this super nice room and there's a balcony you go up these little stairs and there's a balcony on our room and there's a jacuzzi on the balcony overlooking the ocean you can hear the waves it's gorgeous it's like the perfect combo for me because I don't really like the sand but I like the look and the sound so I can listen I can see and I can sit in the hot tub perfect winning and so we'd gone up the day before the morning and watched the sunrise from the jacuzzi and so jason's like i think we should finish it out up here tomorrow like we were our flight was at like 10 or something we were leaving that day and so we're like okay we'll set the alarm we'll get up we'll order mimosa room service and we'll see the sunrise and we'll finish out our vacation strong from the jacuzzi it'll be perfect yes okay he had me at mimosa um, and I didn't even mind setting a sunrise alarm on the last day of vacation because he had me at mimosa. So it's like 
it's like 15 minutes before the alarm's set to go off, right? And we're laying in our bed and we're both asleep. And then all of a sudden you hear this like clang, 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 clang. Like it's like Yeah, like above us. We wake up and we're just both laying there, like not moving, frozen on our beds, and you can hear it. It's definitely on our roof. Like it's definitely some kind of creature. Definitely loud. They're like having a jacuzzi party. Uh, it was monkeys. That's what it was. It was live monkeys having our mimosa jacuzzi party like 15 minutes before I'm supposed to go up. And you hear them like getting down up there. Like, I don't know what they're doing. They're just having fun. <laughs> and then you hear them like scurry on down the way and going down to someone else's balcony. So we're laying there. Then the alarm goes off and I'm like, uh, are we still supposed to go up there? Uh, are they still up there? I mean, it was quiet. It had been quiet for a few minutes, but I'm going to tell you, I was reluctant. And he's like, yeah, yes, yes. Let's go on up. It's our last day. I'm like, all right, brother. All right. So we go up. We're in the jacuzzi. We're finishing. As we've covered, Jason's not much of a romantic kind of guy. <laughs> I think we've covered that. So we've done our jacuzzi time. The sun has risen. We've talked about what a great time we had on vacation. We've toasted our mimosas. And I'm like, all right, well, time to peace out. Like we got showers and packing and we got to hit the road and come on back home to our girl. He's like, five more minutes. And I'm like, well, that's all right. So I'm just kind of sitting there like, I mean, we did the thing. You know, we checked the boxes. The sun is here. What were you doing? Were you just trying to figure it out? Just trying to figure it out. Because I was somewhat winging it, not trying to script it. So trying to be genuine, as, as genuine as possible. And he was. He said some super sweet things there. And he like unearthed this engagement ring from like the earth of the jacuzzi. I don't even know. He'd been hiding it. And it was there. And I like... I mean, I feel like it's not appropriate to pee in a jacuzzi, so I didn't, but it was like a pee your pants kind of moment. I mean, we're talking 15 months later, and I was positive that I had to let that dream go. And here we were. We've been together for 13 years and done all the things, and he said some really sweet things, and he had this beautiful ring, and there we were, monkey free, and he was proposing. We did a good job. It was sweet. Thanks. I was trying to still... Be genuine, do things kind of in my way. So I know some couples, they'll pick out the rings together and I don't, Mm -mm. that's not me. We did not do that. Um, I have a beautiful vintage ring that looks exactly like a ring that Jason would pick out, which is exactly what I would have wanted or what I do want. And it was perfect. It was a good moment. And I was in shock for a long time. Like, I mean, (laughs) we traveled home and it was exciting and it was just, it was fun. And did you order the monkeys? Was that a ploy? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So we knew, I I think we both really knew that we, okay, here we are. We're going to do the thing. Like, we're going to get married. We did not want a big wedding, but we kind of had in our mind, I did want a wedding. Like, I was not down with the justice of the peace. I wanted some kind of little, small, intimate, the people that we really love, we really care about there. We knew the date because we had, years ago, we had picked a day to serve as our anniversary. Yeah. So that was going to be the day. I feel like I was getting robbed. A couple years in, I was like, I don't have an anniversary to celebrate. I'm definitely missing out on a gift. And so we had um, really gotten serious in the month of September. We closed our eyes and picked a day and then it landed on September 14th. And we've been celebrating that as our anniversary for like 12 years. So that was the day. Like we knew we wanted to get together, get married on September 14th. And it was in April that we got engaged. So um, we've got, you know five, six months to put it together. No big deal. Like we also knew pretty much where, like we knew, we knew where as long as it was going to be available and we could make it work. There's a brewery a couple hours north of where we live that is really meaningful, really special to us. And we wanted to get married there down by, they have this creek, like down by the creek. The mountains on the horizon. Yeah. 
there's mountains, there's creek, there's, and by brewery, I mean a hard cider brewery, which is perfect for me because I don't even drink beer. So it was just like, and things were all coming together. Like we got busy. We were planning it. We had our perfect location. We went up there. We were going to be down by the creek. We were, you know, 30, 40 people, just, just our close people, the ones that lift us up, that bring us joy. The guest list was good. We were going to have good food. We were staying in a bed and breakfast with our closest friends and they were going to be there. We were going to make a whole weekend out of it and hike and do all these things. Like it was, it was really lining up, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And so we live in Virginia. The um, venue was a couple hours from here. Still in Virginia. We'll have guests coming up from Georgia. Oh, yeah. Guests coming from where we live. So they'll have to drive a couple hours. And some guests coming from Maryland and Delaware. A little bit spread out. Yeah, up the East Coast. Like, we kind of had the East Coast covered. Um, and they were coming in from, because I'm from Georgia, that's where our people are. So here we are. And things are really, I mean, I feel good about it. I had some great help from friends that were helping do decorations. And I mean, like, we weren't going crazy. We did it ourselves. And we were keeping it small, but exactly how we wanted it. We found the photographer, the place to make the cake. The I had ven- my dress. Our venue was available didn't take too long to find a dress yeah um i found like a shirt or whatever like, yeah it, everything was planned easy. we were ready we found a good old boy officiant to perform the ceremony we did all good all good in the hood we're ready to roll so it's like i don't know 10 days or so out and one of my girlfriends p.s side note about blaine I don't really keep up with what's happening in the world. I'm not super big on current events, the news, politics. Those things stress me out. So I just stay away from them and stay in my own little bubble. Right. I just tell you the things you need to know. Yeah. I've still, anything I need to know, he tells me. Most of the time, I don't need to know. It stresses me out. So it's about 10 days. One of the friends that's helping with decoration, she texts me and she's like, hey, duh, 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 the tablecloth, blah, 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 blah. And how are you feeling about the hurricane? Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me, what hurricane is this you speak of? And she's like, oh, um, just kidding. No hurricane. I, I don't, I, I, no kidding. She'd forgotten that I'm not tuned into the world. And I say to Jason that night, I'm like, hey, what about this hurricane? And he's. And I'd say, oh, we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, no, it'd be nothing. Fine. It'd be fine. It'd be nothing fine. to worry about. All right. I, I was worried about it. But- Jason. <laughs> Well, turns out for good reason he was worried. As the days go closer and closer, the hurricane gets closer and closer. And it's such a crazy thing because technology is wonderful and we get all these advance notices, but it's at the end of the day, it's still Mother Nature and we don't know. But all of these like track patterns, what's it called? I don't know, the plotting, like where they plot it, the models, the models. They're like model and it's like coming dead at us or just a little bit below us and going to be... Either way, it is going to impact us head on or impact the people that are traveling to us head on. And I am now I'm like freaking out. I'm sweating bullets. Like, what do we do? Do we cancel this? Is it really coming? And, you know, when you're tracking a storm, like every every hour, the model changes. It's like going back out to sea. And then it's like coming head for you. Category five smack dab on top of you. And you're like, oh, my gosh, what do I do? And we worry, you know, is the venue even going to be open? What are their plans? Start reaching out to the bed and breakfast. Like, are they equipped? for us to like ride out the storm girl i'm not kidding you we had everything the clothes are ironed and ready to go we started packing the goodie bags for all the guests are made my fridge is full of food for snacks and the beautiful charcuterie boards that we were going to make for cocktail hour like we are ready we are booked everything like we are going to have our wedding weekend away and then we weren't We had to make the decision. Well, we were prepared to make the decision, and turns out our venue canceled. Right. At one point, we were just going to scale it down, like to just a couple other couples, and hunker down and just get the ceremony done. Nope. 
our bed and breakfast called and they are not equipped to have people. I mean, they were expecting power outages and they're not equipped to take care of people in that capacity for you to hunker down at their bed and breakfast. And then our actual venue, the brewery, they were closing. So we had no option. We had no place to stay and no place to get married. So we, I had to make 30 phone calls and do my best to fight back tears. I held the ones that I knew I wouldn't be able to fight back tears for until last. But I made all those phone calls to say, we've made, and everyone knew. I mean, everyone had been watching and they were waiting and deciding, but I had to, I had to do that. And it was hard. Oh man, I was so sad. And then like, the stinkiest weekend ever because so now we're officially canceled and now we're just home like our whole weekend was everything still shut down around here just in preparation but yeah they expect the hurricane to hit here where we live so everything's shut down people are just hunkered down in their homes we have a completely free free calendar because we're supposed to be getting married and not a raindrop There was a couple sprinkles, a little bit of wind. Oh, please. But the storm ended up going south of us, which would still have impacted our travelers. It would have. It would have still impacted our travelers, and our venues were still closed. And listen, I understand that we are so lucky that it didn't get here, and we weren't affected by it. And there are so many people who lost their homes, and it was a devastating time for them. And I pray for them, and I understand. And that was part of it, because I wanted to like be upset and be sad in it. But then in the moment, I was like, well, you can't be that way, because there's people who lost their homes. And a friend was like, yes, one of the friends. She goes, it's okay. You can still be sad. Even though the hurricane didn't hit you, you can be sad because it was a pretty poop-tastic weekend. Let me just tell you. So there were lots of mimosas. <laughs> we did um, run outside and do our vows or one version of our vows just to kind of mark that day. We did. We made the best of it. Just the three of us at home with all all the snacks that one needed for a party of 40 and lots of mimosas. And it just, it was, it was weird. I mean, it was like this story in the making and, you know, I changed my heart after 12 years and 15 months go by and now here we are and we planned and we excited, we were excited. And then, and you wanted a real wedding this time and all those things. And that wasn't happening. And I, so we, we made it through the weekend. It was bumpy. I cried a lot. And then I just, after a few days, everybody's like, when are you going to reschedule? When are you going to reschedule? And I just looked at Jason and I kind of felt like we were on the same page, but I just said, I don't have the heart to do it again. I just didn't. I didn't. I mean, that my heart to want to marry Jason didn't change. But to plan another wedding and to go through all the things, I didn't have the heart to do that again. I just didn't. I didn't want to. And I think you agreed, wouldn't Yeah. Yeah. And then the decision was, all right, do we wait a year so that our piece of paper has the date that we want? Or do we just decide, okay, let's let's do the official marriage stuff and still just celebrate on our day? Yeah. So... <sighs> Let me backtrack for a second. We picked one of our dear friends. We asked him if he would marry us, if he would officiate our wedding. And he agreed he was going to come from Savannah, Georgia and do that for us. But then we found out there's some weird, like wonky Virginia laws where you have to be a Virginia resident to do it. So he was not going to be able to do it. So we had to find an officiant that would actually like perform the legal ceremony for us. So we'd worked that out. We'd found him. He was a local to the area where we were going to get married. We were going to go over that morning of our actual wedding day, let him legally do it. But then our friend was still going to officiate our ceremony. We would already be legally married, but our friend who we wanted there the whole time was going to do our ceremony. Well, let me just tell you, when you're calling down the list for finding these officiants, you've got all these names. I don't know them. I mean, I don't know them from Adam's house cat. So here we are. I'm just calling random people. And this one guy answers and he says, hi, this is Russ. And I'm like, hi, I, I said, I'm looking for someone to marry me. That's what I said over the phone. He goes, well, I'm not available, but I got a buddy down the street that might be looking for a new wife. And I was like, 
yes, you are my guy. I knew it in the moment. He's my kind of people. And so Russ was slated to marry us, another person we had to cancel on and, you know, be in contact with or whatever. Hadn't met him, hadn't been, didn't know anything about him, but there we were. So fast forward, now we've decided we just don't want to redo the wedding, but we do want to get married. And up there, because that was a special um, spot for us. Yeah, it was still a really meaningful place. We still had the photographer lined up so we could still, you know, get dressed and take some pictures. So a month later, we decided to go up on a weekend after, like, seriously, after a soccer game, the three of us, just the three of us went up. We had coordinated with Russ that we were going to get married first thing on a Sunday morning, and then we were going to go do our photo shoot in our wedding clothes and our wedding location, and we were going to just make the most of it. We were going to have a great lunch at the brewery and have some beers and make the most of it. And our legal date would be a month later, but we were all, I contend, we would celebrate our anniversary on our original date. Well, hurricane number two. I'm not kidding. Hurricane number two coming at us on round number two of wedding date. I don't even, Michael, Hurricane Michael, I think this Uh, one was Michael, doesn't matter. I don't know. Hurricane number two. Are you kidding? Like, we're supposed to be going away for the weekend. We have got a hotel. We've got Russ. We've got the photographer. Our clothes are ready again. And a hurricane is coming. (laughs) Well, this time it did come. It did come here. Well, I guess not, not badly, but it impacted us. We lost power here in our home. We came on Thursday. We were due to leave on Saturday. So we have no power. It's going on a couple days now. And I like mentally and emotionally lost it Saturday morning. Like we're supposed to get it together and go to the soccer game and then hit the road and woohoo, it's our wedding day. We have no power. We're at the critical point of like, do you throw everything out of the freezer? We're running the generator from the neighbors to keep our freshly stocked freezer cold. Yeah. Because it's full and we're trying to save it. We don't waste. So that's a big deal for us. And you can't ask the neighbor to, uh, hey, I'm going to go away for two days to do this wedding thing. Can you um, watch the generator and unplug and unplug it, like plug it in? And like, right. what? And then what no. if the power comes back? You don't need to run the generator, but you've got to plug in your yeah. appliances. So. And I just like mentally broke down. I was like, oh my gosh, why? Why can't we get married? Why does it? Why? 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 I'm not kidding. I went for a run. We went for a run as a family. I sweated it out and I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We are going to put everything we own into our chest freezer. I'm going to call a friend with a pickup truck. We're going to put the entire chest freezer on the back of his truck and we're going to drive it to your parents' house and plug in the whole thing. P.S. They had power and we're just going to go. We're going to make the most of it. That's what we're going to do. And so that's what we did. I found a ride for Sienna to soccer. We handled the freezer. We got it together. I wiped off my tears. We did the thing. We loaded up. We arrive to Sketch City. The hotel was the sketchiest of sketch. And that's because we had booked it, you know, a month ahead of time. It's not the bed and breakfast that I was supposed to be in with my friends. So I don't know if it could have lived up, but it was like the place where you don't take your shoes off or lay under the covers. But it's fine. It's going to be fine. Going to be fine. We sleep. We get up the next morning. We are getting married at 9 a.m., people. It is exciting. We are going to meet Russ. You're booked with Russ. I'm booked with Russ at 9 a.m., followed by 10 a.m. photographer shoot. So we get up. I do my best. I'm like, my friend was supposed to do my makeup, but you know, no one's there. So I'm doing my best with my hair and my makeup, and I'm excited, and I'm just really trying to turn over a good leaf here after hurricane number two, and nothing is panning out. But we're all together. Sienna's beautiful. Jason is so handsome. I'm ready. We drive. We arrive at Russ's 9 a.m. on the dot. Actually, like 8.50. Right. Russ's means his little um, shop on the side of the road. It's the apple shed. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. Completely shack. Should be red shack on the side of the road. A retail shop. Yes, but it's fine. Guess who's not there? Russ. Guess there was no sign of life. Russ is not there. I call Russ. Russ does not answer. I text Russ. Russ does not answer. We're scheduled with the photographer for 9, 30, 10. 10. So we had to... It's 30 minutes away. 
So so, we had to <laughs> just sit there and wait and decide, all right, we just have to go to the photographer. And I'm doing my very best not to cry because I have makeup and here we are. Like I'm supposed to be married and I'm not married and I can't get married. I'm not. I'm never getting married. Never getting married. So we give up ship at 930 and we drive to the photographer. We arrive. I held it together. I did not cry. Torrential downpour ensues. It begins to rain. As soon as we pull up, it starts pouring down rain. (laughs) The temperature drops. It's like 42 degrees and pouring rain. And we're supposed to take these pictures outside by our beautiful creek side. Should have been wedding location. Things are looking really good. They're really good right now. Like, I feel like it was totally appropriate that I should have been drinking, but I wasn't. We made the most of it. We got some umbrellas out. We took some shots with umbrellas, and thankfully, it did stop. The rain tapered off. It didn't get warmer, but the rain stopped. It was cold. (laughs) It was cold. Sienna and I in our sleeveless dresses, our teeth were chattering, but we made the most of it. We got some beautiful images. Still not married, P.S., but... Our our plan at that point was... We'll do the photo shoot, and then we'll start calling around and seeing if somebody else can do the paperwork. Right. Somebody just find me. So I, just somebody saw my paper. But we did it. We had a beautiful pictures. We had a nice lunch. And Russ calls. Russ is ready. Russ is like, oh, yeah. I had you guys down for 11. Oh, Russ. But we did. Okay, Russ, we're going to drive back across town because we are doing the thing today. We are doing it. We are ready for you. So we arrive at, to the Apple Shed, read Shack, but Apple Shed on the side of the road and Russ is there and he looks in true Russ fashion. And so we go up to the counter. I'm not kidding where the cash register is. And then a customer comes. She wants to buy some apples. Russ says, please hold. And he assists her with the apples. And did she want to make a pie or was she going to be frying them? And he helps her find the best kind of apples for frying. And then she said she'd also like to get a pumpkin. Remember, it's October. He said, that's fine. Why don't you go on out there and find you a pumpkin? And I'll be out there in a couple minutes. I'm just going to marry them real quick. Like, all right. And he does. She goes outside, doesn't blink an eye, goes outside to find her pumpkin. Russ goes behind the cash register. He's like, so you guys have your paper? He's like, so you're good and you're good? All right, we're good. Hmm. He didn't have us sign anything. We were like, all right, you can kiss. All right. Well, I'm going to go help the lady with her pumpkin. You guys have a great day. We left feeling, what was your percentage? It was 50, 75%. I I think, think, yeah. I felt we were 75% married. Maybe. We We, felt like it was a 75% chance we were legally married. But you know what? We'd have to just wait and see at that point. We had to wait and see if the paperwork got mailed in and if we received a copy because it couldn't have got any better or worse. I'm not sure at that moment, but I was all done. I had no more mental capacity for anything else. So, We got the lady her pumpkin, her apples fried, and we got married. Woo! Here we go. (laughs) But sure enough, a week later, in the mail came our marriage certificate. Sooner than expected. Yeah. Here we are. We we were 100% official a week later. We are 100% married, baby, after 14 years and a couple different hurricanes and weddings and minds changing. You, me, and Russ and Sienna did the thing. How do you feel? Do you feel married? I do, yeah. It Actually, I will say it does, um, it felt different from the engagement on things were just a little bit different. Good different. I was like, wait, what kind of different? <laughs> <laughs> but it, throughout, you know, throughout each step, people kept, which I don't think is very kind, but they're like, is the... Is the universe trying to tell you something? I you know? know. Multiple is people. Is this a sign? Are these signs? And my perspective, and it's easy to kind of go along with that. My perspective was, well, you know, we're strong enough to get through these obstacles, and it'll just make us stronger. It's true. We have been together for 14 years now, and we've learned a lot along that way. And there were times I weren't, wasn't sure we would make it. And we were committed, and we did that. And I think that brought us here. That brought us to the strength to know that you just continue to persevere. I remember, he's funny that he says things changed because I told you we got engaged and then later that day we were in the airport and he doesn't come out with sweet things very often, but he maybe doesn't even remember this, but we were in the airport just 
just waiting. And he like leaned over and we kissed in the airport and he pulled away from the kiss and he said, the kisses already feel different. And in that moment, like that's the sweetest thing. And that's what it was all about for me. Like was just strengthening us and our bond in a different way and leveling up where we are. And marriage was a part of that, but I think the journey to get there did that for us too. And now there's just also a piece of paperwork that goes with it. And we've learned to do, I think we've learned to do marriage the right way, quote unquote, right way. The right way for us. Compared to the way we did it our first time around. It's true. And it's a funny story from monkeys to apple shacks and everything in between. We have some wonderful friends that supported the process and made it not quite so bad. And here we are. At the end, the result is the same. We are better. We are stronger and we are together and we are now happily married. And we will celebrate that on September 14th, although that's not what the paperwork says. Right. So that's our story. There you go. There is your Valentine's month story. So if you know anyone who you're like, you got to hear this, like you're not even going to believe what they went through. Because I feel like even if you knew the story, you probably just learned some details that you had no idea. Do us a favor. Send them this episode. You can do it right now while we're talking. You can copy the URL, put it in a text and send it over to them and say, these people are hilarious from the monkeys on the roof all the way to two hurricanes. They did the thing. Or maybe you know somebody that's in the midst of planning their wedding and they've got little hiccups come up. So this will help them feel better. <laughs> it's true. And there you go. All right. Until next time, we'll see you then.